To help us look at the security challenges nationwide, it's my pleasure to welcome a security expert and a pastor, Ladi Thompson. Good morning. Pleasure is mine. Good to have you with us. And uh, joining us via Skype is another security expert, Dr. Ona Ekomo. Ona, are you there? He's not there. Okay. I suppose he will join us in the course of this um, uh, segment. Well, we have Pastor Thompson, so let's get on with it. Now, the attacks seem to be coming um, fast and furious. What would you say is responsible for that? Well, let me just take a minute to talk about something pleasant before we delve into this. <laughs> I think I'd like to first of all congratulate uh, John Mongo, who is 60 today, for making that move when he did. Channels is doing a great job in this nation. We take a bow on his behalf. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, having said that, um, it's painful that in Nigeria we have refused to listen. Whatever is happening right now is something that we should have expected. Um, Mr. Thompson, I'd like to have a, before you continue, let me just have a conversation with Alera. There's a, you know he said something about the chairman, we're whispering, nobody's supposed to hear us. Okay. Chairman and the move he made. Okay. I mean, it's really something real nice. So what do you think we can do to ensure that that move is strengthened? We can't, well, talk, we we can't talk about that now, can we? Um, okay. okay. Let, let's allow Mr. Thompson. Okay, right. Mr. Pastor. Oh, yes. I, I apologize. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> so having congratulated John Momo, let's get to the oh, okay. <laughs> integrity. So you were hearing us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, the truth is, um, we are fighting challenges on various sides in this country. Now, the peculiarity of the war against terror is that we have refused to recognize it for what it is. Wow. Yes, there was a de-escalation of kinetics of the Boko Haram. But the Boko Haram, when it is properly studied, is a kind of warfare that is not limited to one. I'm talking to you about the fact that you are dealing with something that has infiltrated institutions in Nigeria and that taking out its military arm alone will not incapacitate it. It will simply shift form. And it shifted form into what you people call headsmen. And what has happened is that while people are distracted, the Boko Haram right now is regrouping. And um, why I'm a bit more worried is that there's just no value to human worth in this country. University of Medigree, what you're talking about here is what they call soft targets. They go after women, they go after children, they go to places that are practically defenseless. And the purpose of that is to stir up an outrage and increase the instrument of fear and dread in the country. So what we're looking at today, like I said about a year and a half ago, two years ago, until the government creates a new body that is better equipped to fight this scourge, we are going to be running around in circles. Unfortunately, people will continue. When you, when you say create a new body, I mean, there are those who argue with you, we have enough bodies already created, trained. Are you implying that those bodies are not adequate Effective. or that they are okay you mentioned to me about being if, um, infected already do you think that new body being created would be effective or would even not have been infected already you see like all other countries everybody had to agree that the resurgence of religious extremism or islamism as some people call it is something that is new to the lexicon of most military institutes all across the world. In the past six, seven years, the textbooks all across the world to fight these things have just been written. Now, it's interesting that we fail to realize that the police is not equipped to handle counter-terrorism. The army is not, really. 
What it takes to handle counterterrorism has a lot more resemblance to the scalpel of a surgeon. It's a precision thing. And the truth is that until we discover this, define terrorism from the Nigerian perspective or mm -hmm. the African perspective, and then raise a body that can hold it. Like I was pointing out to you, this war form, it's a war form. Mm -hmm. Once it hits a country, it collapses a country from within. And what it does is that ever before the escalation of violence and kinetics, it does what we call a displacement sequence. It would have been taking influence in different areas and different institutes in a nation quietly for 10, 20, 30 years, and then quietly slipping in its militia all over the place. Its militia will never move without a signal. What we refuse to accept is that what is dangerous about the Boko Haram is not those boys, it's the intelligence that is guiding it. The high command. It's <laughs> finances, the logistics, media. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thompson, just before you go on, uh, we have Dr. Ona Ekomo joining us via Skype. Dr. Ekomo, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Neota. Uh, we'll come to you shortly, but um, Mr. Thompson, you were, you were talking about the infiltration of the institutions. You talked about um, the security institutions, and then you were on the media part before we went on that way. Yes, what I was pointing out is that there's a lot more intelligence behind terror in Nigeria than we are prepared to credit it with. And that when a man has a cancer and you keep diagnosing it as uh, a malaria fever, you really will never beat it. We need to understand for the past few years, if you take note, I've been saying the same thing for about 15 years, maintaining the same stand for about 15 years, the same diagnosis for about 15 years. And what we have observed is that the nation will not handle this thing with the kind of uh, gravity that it requires. The regular army is not trained to handle this. When it was designed, the, 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 the narrative that became what we call the Boko Haram in Nigeria actually started about 1906, Hassan al-Banna. And then it metamorphosed into a global franchise. Now, that global franchise has a model. It's a model that many other nations have studied. If Nigeria today is breathing and we're at peace, it's because of the diversion created by ISIS and the full attention swings back to Africa the way it was when the Boko Haram had gone to number three on the global index. What we're talking about here is the simple fact that we are being beaten by a superior intelligence wasting the lives of oh, many yes. young men. The media arm is there. There are those who recruit the, rec the rec recruitment uh, uh, institutions that help to keep bringing in new and fresh soldiers. The radicalization process, that one is there. How about those who move their money around? And then let me tell you the truth about the media thing. The molding of opinion is global. Some, a few years back, I was in Washington and we were looking at the fact that the Nigerian government was prevented from buying ammunition while it had a war against the Boko Haram. There were certain weapons grade that Nigeria was banned from buying as a nation. While whereas the, the Boko Haram who are on ground with their backers, local and international, were getting access yes, to, those. to these things. And nobody was asking questions. The international lobby that is working against Nigeria. I mean, I was in Washington, I was wondering to myself, how come we are not here in Washington as a people? Neutralizing this thing, knowing full well it will affect the outcome of what is going on within our country. So why were we not allowed access to those arms and ammunition? Well, when you talk about abuses, if you go on to the global uh, the scene, mm -hmm. the global scene, mm -hmm. uh, any nation that has human rights abuses and the abuses come, you know, back and forth, your armed forces, your you know, law enforcement and all that, once it can be proven that there are abuses going on, look, this thing is, is, is like a game of, I don't know what I can call it, but if the lobbying game goes on internationally and your voice is not heard, heard. it could easily be labeled 
I'll tell you something. I was with the governor in Nigeria some years ago. Unknown to him, they had proceeded to like file charges against him for genocide in the state, whereas he was the one who was being oppressed. He was in Nigeria totally oblivious that the Boko Haram had, through external agencies, had filed genocide charges against him. And there were reports from some nations that were supporting that to give it weight. He was fortunate that by accident, he was able to discover that they had already advanced the case against him at the international level, a serving government in Nigeria at that time. What would have happened to him? So the point is, we need to match this thing with what it takes to handle it once and for all. Accepted, there was a de-escalation initially, but the intelligentsia shifted front to another group. Shifted for the, the other group they shifted front to is more deadly, more effective, its strike capacity is higher, it's doing a lot of damage across the country, even worse than the Boko Haram. And its media management is even better than that of Boko Haram. So when we're even talking about the Boko Haram right now, Boko Haram is primitive in its, in, in its uh, execution of terror compared to what Nigeria chooses to call headsmen problem. Now, what is coming next, I will tell you. What's coming next is that we need to thank God that right now there are certain forces I cannot describe here who are holding the Almagiri for us in Nigeria. The radicalization process also targets the Almagiri. If Nigeria does not move quickly to give meaning to the lives of those boys, protect them, I'm putting a buffer right now, something to retard the, 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 that process. If we allow it to spread into the Almagiris, the combination of the Boko Haram, the so-called herdsmen, plus Almagiris. Almagiri, there will be no nation. And let me tell you something, these things can so easily be prevented. It's not as if the, the terror intelligence is so far ahead that this country can't handle it.